Hey, don't be getting on here talking about politics and religion. In <laughs> fact, all we're going to do is talk about politics and religion, and we got a special guest today. But first of all, we want to say good morning to you. I'm Erskine, the co-host, and my man, Jason Plummer. What's up, man? What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Keeping it real in Litchfield. <laughs> How we do it here? Yeah, keep it. Keep, yeah, I like that. Keeping it real in Litchfield. I saw somebody this morning. I'm at a conference in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and they said, hey, aren't you from Litchfield? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. But that's I said, the I heard white guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's the white guy you know, from Tennessee. But uh, they said, uh, we heard you talking about Litchfield, and uh, we just thought you were from there. And I was like, no, I love Litchfield. I love the good people of Litchfield, but I'm not from there. Did they Were they talking about Litchfield, Illinois, or Litchfield, Kentucky? Because there are two. They were talking about Litchfield, Illinois. I think they've got some friends <laughs> in Arkansas, and they're from Wisconsin, and I think they meet halfway in Litchfield. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. And so I said, Jew belts, baby. Get some Jew belts while you're there. <laughs> 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 Talking like That's I'm it. local. That's right. Uh, or you or belts. Jew belts, you belts. Hey, whatever. You know, I'm not from around there. <laughs> <laughs> so that boy ain't from, he ain't from around here. <laughs> uh, Jew belts. That's hilarious. That's good. Hey, That's uh, good. Brian says, good morning. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Brian. It's good to see uh, folks tuning in, and uh, we should say good morning to our audience that is viewing from Facebook Live and also from YouTube. Good morning all around the world, literally, to people mm -hmm. who are watching this. We, you know, we have about a, an hour or so window, depending on what's going on. And Jason, you got a funeral today, and so yeah. you have some very important pastoral work that's going on uh, today, and as well as every day. Don't min don't mean to minimize and make it seem like you only work <laughs> on certain days of the week. That's right. That's right. You know how you pastors are. That's but, right. Uh, so excited to have you back on the show, and uh, we have a special guest today. We're going to be talking about workplace witness and what does it mean to know your job and to do your job well. But before we do that, where are my Baylor Bear shorts at? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a contest. What like, you think about that? Baylor just handed it down. I was, I was already kind of, you know, disappointed that UCLA didn't make it, and that was – that was, that was, um, I think one of the reasons why I think God gives us sports is the only way sometimes that we can um, feel the intensity of what maybe glory feels like, or, you know, this little smidgen of, of amazing um, happens when uh, a guy nails a, somewhat of a half court shot in the last second to, to win the game for Gonzaga. I cannot remember his name. He's it's killing me. And all of a sudden uh, we're all just standing on our feet, completely enthralled with this um, amazing thing that just happened to us. Right. And um, I, I watched that shot several times. I watched the intensity. I watched all that. And I, I, you know, Piper talks a little bit about these springboard things. John Piper talks about these springboard things that I was sprung into glory when I saw that. I was like, that's absolutely amazing. And I cats off to Gonzaga on that game <laughs> and, and, then, <laughs> and getting rolled by Baylor in the final. So who, who uh, rolled them? Who rolled them? Baylor. Wait, Good old Baylor. Wait a minute. I'm actually a true prophet. Yeah. Hey, I predicted Baylor. Would win. Hey, <laughs> my first prophecy day. has come true. <laughs> there it is. Yes, my first prophecy has ever. Now, now we can believe everything. Now we can. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are wondering, if you guys are wondering why the screen is dancing around so much, um, I have this little device that attaches to stuff. And it holds my camera. But of course, in doing a conference in Louisville, packing 37 pieces of music equipment, and then coming and doing the conference here in Gatlinburg, the thing that's holding me back this morning is this little dinky little piece here that holds my camera. So I'm holding my camera with my arm. And so this is my workout for today. There will be no extra workouts today. <laughs> this is the workout for today. That's right. You need an assistant. Like you need another. You got the one who does all the administrative stuff. 
Now you need to get like Aaliyah. Jasmine to uh to like, hey, look, I got a checklist. We're gonna knock this thing out. Yeah, exactly. I can see Jazzy but, doing something like that. Checklist. Jasmine music. would do it. Justin would be yeah. like, this is punishment. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. Yeah, that's right. This is your thing. Yeah, yeah this is your thing, man. I, I I'm not in this. <laughs> and it's goofy. It's goofy. Your stuff is goofy. <laughs> He'll be the first one to tell me, man. That's goofy. Yeah, I can. I love it, I when, can. I love it when homeschool kids try to talk trash. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, oh. in Actually. my day, <laughs> back in my day, <laughs> Actually. you'd have been lunch meat. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we don't do oh. like that. But we're we're far nicer now. We're redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and uh, it won't be very long before we get into what that means to be a follower of Christ. Because we got a special episode coming up. I don't know how one of my own relatives finagled trying to get onto the show, but she did. She interviewed with both of us, and uh, she's bringing some content. She's bringing some bars this morning, and so we have been changed. I want to say hello to a couple of other people. We got Roy, who's listening to us in Kansas City. He's with us. We love you, man. Yeah. And yes, I will get in contact with you very soon. Like I said, I've been in a conference in Louisville and then a conference here in Gatlinburg. And then we've got uh, some things coming up. And then I'll be home for a day before I head your direction, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, we got some things lined up in St. Louis. Got that worked out. Um, and then um, uh, heading up to Milwaukee, um, which you and I love to talk about a little bit. But that's Milwaukee. Cool. Milwaukee. Yeah. So which we have I, some... By the providence of God, um, your dad lives up there, right? Your family? Yes. Yep. yes. And my, my dad. Family Hi, Erskine. There. So both of our families up in Milwaukee. That's amazing. We met yeah. each other in Texas. We've traveled yeah. all around the states together. You're in Illinois. I'm now in Tennessee. And who would think both of our parents are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? That's it. That's it's crazy. It. But we're going on a road show, and the purpose of the road show is to begin to take some of these issues that we talk about every week together in this platform to the man on the street platform, where we'll be, be asking pastors and interviewing people who are out there on the street um, about some of the issues and kind of what they're seeing and where they're at. Because, you know, like I said, I'm in Tennessee, Jason is in Illinois, and uh, well, I'm sometimes in Tennessee. <laughs> I'm all over the place, but we see what we see from our vantage point, but it's good to include some other people. And with that note, we have a special guest that's coming onto the show. It is my aunt, Marcia, my auntie. She's coming on the show. Once I press this button. Press it. Let's see it. Let's see it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Aunt Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, you two. How are you? Good morning. How both of y'all are. I'm shaky well, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much so. But that's okay. We're going to get through it. We will persevere and get through it. I promise you. But All what right. I'm saying is this is y'all show. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you you taking over the show already? <laughs> Maybe you should, what do you should put her quite. in the middle. <laughs> should we Not put her quite. in the middle? You should put her in the middle. We uh, can... There we go. You don't like the black on both sides? Is this making you feel uncomfortable, ah! Jason? <laughs> uh, no. Person. I was Person. just trying to. The middle is kind of a place of honor. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. Have our guests in place of honor. <laughs> there we go. I think we should take a poll. For the people who are watching this show, <laughs> where should Marcia be positioned? Wait, wait, I like Jason in the middle. Uh, yeah. But no, this I, makes sense. Good to have you on the show. Thank As you, you. know, we, we kid around before we get down to some serious stuff, and we're going to hear from you in just a moment here. But okay. how are you doing today? I'm All doing right. great here in Austin, Texas. I'm doing okay. wonderful. All right. Weather's good. Weather's good. Yeah, it's bright. It's sunny. I hadn't walked outside yet. It's supposed to be, I think, close to 90. So after this, I'm going to go outside and try to enjoy some sunshine, get some vitamin D. Be a bum. Just bum around the neighborhood. See what's going on in the neighborhood. I don't just enjoy I don't, everything. I don't know if we enjoy 90. Like, <laughs> like um, we, we put up with 90 in Illinois. I'm not well, sure we after, enjoy it. 
after February, when we had, um, I call it Snowbid 21, everybody else calls it Snowbageddon, when it was like Tuesday morning, five degrees, which is very, very rare for Austin, Texas. I'm enjoying the 90s. I, I really am. It's just like, yes, 90s. Uh, okay. And I have sandals I can wear now instead of lots and lots and lots of layered clothes and thick shoes and a whole nine yards. So yes, I'm enjoying it. Now, talk to me in July. I will not enjoy it as much, <laughs> but right now, yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm just yeah. saying. When I, when I first showed up to Texas, it was in June 1st or June 6th, and it was um, 106 degrees. Yep. You guys had gone so many days without rain, and it was brown. Mm -hmm. thought, oh, oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's going to get like that. Mm. I remember it that will, summer. I, don't know. It, I was farming like then. Yeah. It will, it will yeah. definitely get like that. So yeah. it's like, okay, we had our winter. Um, we're getting our spring. There's been some tornadoes here close to Austin, hail. Um, so we're getting our spring and then we'll jump right into summer and it'll be hot. It'll be ugly. Uh, our subdivision, hopefully they'll get the pool fixed from the freeze and all the kids will be at the pool again, mm. including myself. So, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah. Just what? Just wondering offhand, how is Austin, Texas doing these days? Are they keeping it weird? Austin is always weird, but that's the charm of Austin. You yeah, never know what you will see on Congress Avenue, which is right down from the Capitol. You walk down there, you can see any and everything. It's kind of like, okay, this is Austin. I got to remember, this is definitely Austin. So <laughs> you just take it with yeah. a grain of salt and keep on walking. And that's during the day. That's not night. That's during the day. <laughs> Uh, and, at, and at night on 6th Street, you can see any or everything. Um, your cousin, Tyra, my daughter, they were on 6th Street. They were handing out boxing gloves in, in the middle of 6th Street because they shut it down to traffic. They were having a boxing match. Just, okay, go for it. No ring, no mat, no nothing. They were boxing. Mm -hmm. So if you get knocked out, you get knocked out and you fall on the uh, pavement. And yes, somebody did get knocked out. Well, Don't ask that happened. <laughs> that's Austin. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll I take boxing. I just hear tales and see people post on Facebook. Well, stay classy, Austin. Right. Stay classy. So, right. I'll I'll just <laughs> <laughs> only thing that they not having this year they having it streaming is South by Southwest. Hopefully they will bring it back in some form of a live version because they do have live music. Um, they have the tech conference. They have different speakers. So that's the only thing that is missing. You're missing that. Um, I think Texas Relays, I don't know if they're having that or not. That's the big track and field event at UT. And that's always good. But, That'd be you know, cool Texas... Life. Yeah, it sure. is. It's really, really good. But Texas is slowly getting back. People are getting their vaccinations and the COVID rate is slowly dropping. So hopefully they will we'll get to a new normal. We can't say back to the old ways because it's not going back. It's just a new normal. Yeah. Where, you know, you you do what you're supposed to do, the social distancing, you wear the mask, get the vaccination. And hopefully we'll get to a new normal where Zilker Park will, that's a big, huge park by uh, Lady Bird Lake, you know, will be filled and people will be out there and people will be walking the trails and all this other good stuff. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's the, that's the good thing about it, but you know, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting. And have you got yeah. vaccinated? Have you got your vaccination yet? I haven't. I've not gotten it. Neither is my wife. My in-laws have gotten it, and uh, my mom and dad have gotten it. So okay, we'll, we'll have to wait on our turn to get there. Okay. So. My arm is dead. My arm is dead. I got to put that camera down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! Oh, what yeah. do I have over my shoulder here? Baylor Bears. That's what's up. 
Okay, get that out of here. We got to talk oh. about some stuff here. We we got limited time today. Okay, okay. So you have a title uh, that is, is as long as Anna Vitarte. Yes. And wh what is your title and who are you? <laughs> who am I? I am senior mediator, senior housing and employment mediator with the Texas Workforce Commission Civil Rights Division. My actual job is a wide variety of different things. My main job is I mediate employment and housing discrimination cases for the state of Texas. So that means that anybody that files a charge of discrimination, whether it's housing or employment in the state of Texas, um, when they file a charge, we look at it, make sure it falls into Title VII age and disability, one of those categories. That's the federal law. State law here in Texas mirrors federal law. So we look at it, make sure that it does qualify for us to handle it. And they have the first option of uh, going into mediation. Mediation is strictly voluntary. It, you can't force anybody. And that's the same with EEOC. So if both parties agree to mediate, then we schedule a mediation. Our mediations are usually four hours long and we can either do a telephonic or we don't use Zoom for the state of Texas. We use Microsoft Teams, which is on the same lines as Zoom. And we, yes. Time out. Okay. That, that's a lot. Let that's us a process lot. that for just a second. So you okay. deal with discrimination in the state of Texas. Yes. Discrimination in the workplace. Yes. So and for, for, there's some people are asking like, why are you on the Way Forward show? Right. Is it just because you were my, my aunt or no, you're no. dealing with discrimination in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we talk about when we talk about race and politics. And here is a cross yes. section of where those two things intersect in the right. workplace, in the real world. And this mm -hmm. creates a lot more of these discussions just really quickly for the sake of time. Uh, uh, discrimination is categorized as the unjust and prejudicial treatment of different categories of people or things, especially on the grounds of race, age or sex. And so you are dealing with those kind of things all the time either right. mediating so that they don't go to court or they go to court or settling or all those different mm -hmm. things. And right. so that gives us a window into who you are and why you're here. Right. Jason, take it from here. Okay. Um, let me go back and explain title seven and how the state law mirrors title seven encompasses a um, race, color, national origin, or religion. Title seven mm -hmm. doesn't encompass, but there are laws on the federal level of age and disability. Age is covered by ADEA and disability is ADA. So yes, those are covered under federal law and those are cases that we do take. And on the state level, we mirror federal law. So those are the cases that we do mediate and if we can't settle in mediation, we send it on to investigation and determine if there is a cause or no cause finding. In other words, did they violate the state and federal law or did they not? Same thing with housing. Housing, we don't look at um, national. Well, we look at familial status, which is um, your family status, because some people don't want to rent with fam rent with families with children which is against the law, because if you have children, where are you going to live? So that is covered under housing. Housing is uh, the state and federal laws under HUD. And um, so we look at all of those. We investigate all of those. HUD has a lot of different rules and regulations and laws. And some people don't realize that, that our agency also handles housing discrimination cases. And right now, with everything going on, especially with COVID, these laws are very, very important that people understand that they do have rights and they should not let their rights slip just because we're in the middle of well, we were coming out of a pandemic. And we're seeing more and more people finally filing because they feel that their rights have been violated. That's where our agencies and EEOC and HUD comes in to make sure that your rights are protected. Not okay. only the employee, but the employer, not only the tenant, but the renter, I mean, the housing organization. Okay, time out. Okay, okay. Time out. Jason, okay. jump in here real quick. 
when we when we talked on the phone and you, you talked about mediation, you yes. are essentially your job is to, to be the person in between to try to reconcile two people to two groups of mm -hmm. people, right? One has been right. offended, one has supposedly done the offending, right? Right. And Correct. and your and you have a criteria to follow. You've got it's got to meet certain guidelines for you to if this is actual Correct. discrimination or if it's not. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many how many actual cases of discrimination do you find that you have you have to mediate in? If you had a say hundred cases of those accusations, how many of those would you actually find yourself mediating in? Oh, good lord! Um, well, I've been with the agency. Okay, um, I've been with the agency for over seven years. I've mediated over seventeen hundred mediations. Out of those, there are. I would say maybe six or 700 that I have mediated. Now understand when I mediate and we reach a settlement and the settlement is signed, there is no, nobody accepts liability. So in other words, I can't make a determination that they have violated the law. Now, based okay. on what I hear and the evidence that I review, and my knowledge and expertise as a mediator, and yes, I have been trained as an investigator. A lot of these cases, if it was actually investigated and we did make a determination, yes, they would be discrimination. And some of the things that I hear in mediation, and understand mediation is strictly confidential. So the information that I get told during the joint sessions or when I break the parties apart and they tell me in private caucuses, it would make your hair raise because some of the blatant things that happen that either they do unintentionally or they knowingly, it's just like, do you know the law? This is 2021, you cannot do these things. And if you continue on, it's going to be very, very bad for you because the next time you may say no to mediation and it's investigated, and if we make a determination, it goes public. There is no way around it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It is on your public record that you did violate the law. And this is the law that you violated. Now, in mediation, if we do reach a resolution, and I feel that you have violated the law, one of the things that's a non-negotiable is you will get training. Because obviously, you don't understand you're not willing to understand and you will receive training from TWC. And our training is very rigorous. It's very intense. And when you walk out, you'll understand what the law is and what you violated. Can I jump in? And for I second? suggest strongly don't do it again. Yes. Can I jump in for a second? Because I'm, I'm used to jumping in and interrupting Please. you because that's kind of how our family conversation is. I know. Yeah. You know, yes. we, we're dealing with a, sort of a culture you know, Jason and I talk a lot about critical race theory and, and some of the things that are going on from an academic standpoint that are kind of filtering into culture. Is it is there and I don't know how you would answer this, but maybe Jason, you jump in on this as well. But is there sort of a changing of the goalpost to what discrimination is and what discrimination was and how we are identifying certain things? There seems to be a hypersensitivity, a hypervigilance to this whole idea of what discrimination is. And maybe things that weren't necessarily discrimination before now are all of a sudden heightened. And, uh, you know, just sort of the, maybe not from the standpoint yeah. of just awareness, but from the standpoint of now we're calling everything discrimination. Somebody looked at me. Oh, that's discrimination. Somebody talked to me. Oh, that's sexual discrimination. Is Are you finding that over the years that you've been doing this, like you said, the 17 years that there's a a shifting of and a transition of forms of discrimination? Is it, are we seeing an increase because the, the goalposts have changed or is it more of a, a societal wanna, thing? What, what do we say? I want to ask see, you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh -huh. I, wanna, I want you to answer the question, but one of the things that, that Erskine is bringing up that I think if I'm going to speak from, say, a, a culturally white community, all right, mm -hmm. I would say that there is, what you're talking about in workplace discrimination, the criteria that you have for law, um, what you have to follow to decide what discrimination is, right? According to the, the law versus what is put out on media or what we observe culturally. I think there, there are really some discrepancies there. Cause one of the things I was struck by with our conversation was 
just how you said some, there, are, there, are, there are things you have to follow. And if it doesn't meet this certain criteria, you yourself have to say this isn't discrimination. Right. But that's really discussed or talked about culturally so that we're left with this idea of what Erskine's saying, are the goalposts moving or does the culture define what discrimination is or is actually, is there a more legitimate understanding, which is I think a workplace where you have to, this is what the law says discrimination right. is. So I'm right. curious if you're right there. Did you, did, you, did, you, did you understand where I'm coming from? Like the difference mm -hmm. between what says discrimination is versus right. what your job, like your law says it is. Maybe right. you can does speak to that. Right. What you're asking me, does culture dictate law or is the law, is the law, is the law? That's now, a, yes, yes, good. Okay. Yeah. Answer the question. <laughs> right. In the workplace, understand, you're going to, culture is going to come into play. That that's no way around it because everybody has a life outside of work. But when you come into work, there's certain rules and regulations you must adhere to. You know, your beliefs are your beliefs, but when you come into the workplace, you have to tap down those beliefs, you know, and tap down your actions and your attitudes. And if you don't understand, look at your uh, employee manual because it, it clearly shows what the company expects from you, your actions, your attitudes, and everything else. Now, when you go, when you leave work, that's your business. But when you come into work, you have to do certain things. Now, with all that being said, there's certain things that are coming into play that are being recognized that really is discrimination, like microaggressions. For example, you, like with a woman, if I get assertive, some people assume that I'm an angry black woman. No, I'm just a certain, I'm asserting certain things or I'm confident or um, hair. Certain people say dreadlocks, they look nasty, they look dirty and it's really not. So that's not sometimes, really- wait, wait. As a dreadlock man, sometimes they yeah. are though. Yeah. But the, you know the process the, <laughs> putting the egg yolk and everything in your hair. Sometimes they're dirty. They're nasty. Right. Come on right. now. But for overall in the workplace, can you say that as a blanket statement? Are they nasty, dirty, or you ban a certain hairstyle? No, because then it's like okay, certain hairstyles are tied to certain races. Then you're looking at discrimination. Now another thing that's culture and is it discrimination um politics that's always a hot button subject can you talk about politics in the workplace yes you do have the right but you also have to be aware of what other people are going to say and how sensitive they are can they go complain to hr yes then it's up to hr to go maybe you want to watch your surroundings because other people are sensitive. Is it against the law? No, because you do have that right to talk about it. Now, when you start saying things that could cross the line that then transcend to you're violating certain people's rights, then it becomes discrimination. Now, you can What's have your that opinion about politics. Uh, um, according to your job, but what, where's that line? If I me saying I disagree with progressive liberalism, so to speak, right? Let's say I, I'm a conservative mm -hmm. and I say I, I don't buy into progressive liberal, liberalism. So if a, if a progressive hears that, mm -hmm. then they automatically have the right to assume that I'm I'm anti-gay, I'm, I'm uh, anti-race, I'm anti-something, or do I have to clearly state um, something derogatory towards a particular group? Like I'm just curious, where is that line drawn in, in your estimation right. in the workplace? Because right. this is going to yeah. this is going to to our religious discussion in a second, right? Where Christians right. or or anybody with religious convictions inside right. the workplace. Now, you can have your opinions, you can have your beliefs. That's fine. Mm. That is not wrong. That is your right. Now, when you act upon those rights and you start treating certain 
groups a different way because of your beliefs, then it okay. becomes discrimination. Now, you believe what you want to so believe. If I, so, so if I push back, say, say for instance, I'm working on a schedule mm -hmm. and this person is needing hours, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that they're progressively liberal. So I, I deny their hours and give hours to save me somebody who's a little more along my list. That's discrimination, right? That could saying? get into that could right. get into discrimination, but, but if we're having, it would if we're having, but if we're having a conversation and mm -hmm. we both make it clear that that okay, we don't agree politically, okay? Mm -hmm. And if they say, Well, you're just a bigot, you're a hateful bigot. Is that still okay within the realms of freedom of speech or are they crossing that line as well? If they're calling you a hateful bigot, why are they calling you a hateful bigot? Then we would have to dig into why, what is the rationale? What were your actions for them to say that? Not because of your political beliefs, because everybody has their beliefs, but what gave them the reason or the rationale? Were you yeah. acting a certain way with okay. certain groups compared to others? You can say that, but what were your actions? What was your mannerisms? Okay. What was your so conversation? The line, the line drawn is my decision-making. Is right. how I, I approach things. Okay, that, that's yeah, what I was know. curious. There's a lot yeah. of rhetoric that goes on between people and a lot of mm -hmm. things that happen and, and then and then you get told you can't say that. You can't say that, right? Okay, well, I, I get that because there, there, there are lines in speech. We have to be careful not, not to, to stir up crowds to anger and things like that. However, inside the workplace, there is a line where your rhetoric moves into an action that I'm actually <laughs> something towards somebody. So your job as a mediator then is to find out, did my rhetoric go toward an active um, – action towards somebody that actually mm -hmm. pushes them down based on what I believe about them. Right. That, that, okay. And, and then, so you mediate through all that, right? right. And then you, you, have, right. you have to decide according to a criteria. Yes, that is that, or no, that's not that. Is that, is that right. My, I have my, to, right. I have to dig deeper and say, okay, your gut tells you one thing, but I have to operate on documentation, proof evidence in the law. Tell me, why you feel this way? What was his actions? What was his okay. attitude? What did he say? Did he say something that gave you the indication that he's a bigot? Or okay. just That's a because you heard a conversation, he's talking about a certain thing, his political beliefs, but he's never acted on those political beliefs. Okay. Then so that's, that's just a, a conversation. He has his beliefs, you have his beliefs. But if he didn't act on Right, so that, that's definitely a tighter okay. line than the culture, right? Because the culture says, if you say these things or you believe mm -hmm. these things, you are guilty. But inside the law, the workplace, there is a tighter line that says, wait a minute, those words right. have to move to action. Right. Yeah, and show me the proof. Show I mean, me the proof of that. Yeah. Though may, right. I may not agree with those right. words, as long as that person is not moving on them towards something, we can have a little room here to dialogue and talk. But once I move right. towards a, a deliberate action, We've got a problem. This is so right. interesting to me because if you were just to pay attention to Fox News, CNN, or whatever, or just the culture, you would get this idea that even inside the workplace, especially with this idea of cancel culture, that, man, you, you step one little bit out of line and yeah. uh, one idea of thought that's contrary to what the overall thinking is, whether it's conservative or, or liberal, you, you're out. You're out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I would say that's, that's a big perception, but you seem to be saying, well, no, wait a minute. There's a tighter line than that. And it's yeah. my job to figure out where this is and what's, and there's a lot of follow. Huh. Right. Right. Um, right. Because you know, you know what that tells me, Marcy? That, hold on. That, you know what that tells me? I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, okay. That You're going to have to interrupt her. But you know what that tells me is it, it tells me, it gives me a lot of confidence in your job and why you're needed. Right. Because here's the thing. You, you I may right. not like your politics. And in a mediation, sometimes gut tells me they may be this way. But if I don't have documentation proof evidence, that's just a gut feeling. I can't act upon a gut feeling. Yeah. I have to go with what does the law say in this situation? And sometimes it's very hard for people 
to understand, but the law is the law is the law. And if I don't you have that law documentation, law. It, it is, it, it really is, but I have to do that you, you, because that's the law. You have both, you have the, you have say, for instance, if you're dealing with race, you might have the right. black community on one hand and you got the man on the other and you've got to, you've got to try to mediate between these two people. And it's and like, you might not wait on either one, right? It, yeah. It has happened that numerous times. Like <laughs> it, it, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a story. I've had situations where, um, one particular case, this individual said that she was being discriminated against because of her race and gender. Okay, that's fine. That does happen. Um, listening to the case, there started some red flags popping up. Okay, first of all, discrimination does happen. Mm -hmm. But when you, when the story continues on and you discriminating against your subordinates that you're managing and you're doing the exact same thing to your subordinates that you're alleging your manager's doing to you, okay, there's a problem. That's the first of all. Mm -hmm. And the comments that you're making to not only your black subordinates, but your white subordinates are clearly racist and you're African-American, there's a bigger problem. I'm looking at you like you're alleging that they're discriminating against you, but you're doing the exact same thing to your subordinates. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, her manager was African-American. And some of the things that he was saying to her, she was twisting. It wasn't racist. It wasn't discriminatory. Like, if I put you back on your team, you're going to have to work harder. She took it as, because I'm a black female, I'm going to have to work twice as hard to prove it. No, he was saying, if I put you back on that team, you're going to have to work twice as hard to gain their trust because they don't trust you. Mm. That's what he said, but mm. she twisted the words. Trying to, so trying to use the black card too much. One, she heard one thing because she's so determined to prove her case. And in reality, right. that's not what he said. So I'm here to decipher and decode the words and say, look, right. that's not what was going on. That's not what was right. said. Here's the problem. Wow. You were doing the same thing that you alleged was being done to you that you were doing to your subordinates. So here's a big problem. You can't do that and come in here squeaky clean. Your hands are just like you alleging their hands is muddy. So we got a problem here. Okay. NASA, that, we got a problem. Yeah, it's all coming full circle so, to me now. Yeah. Because you, know, you, know, you being, being one of my yeah. family members, you have the perfect personality to do this job because sometimes you got to tell people, grow the heck up. And then sometimes <laughs> you got to come alongside people. And so I know that our personality and our family is well equipped to you have the hard edge and then sometimes even the soft edge. Yes. So, yes. I get it. So sometimes you do Perfect have job to you. give that cold water dash of reality and say, look, mm -hmm. let's be real. That that's mm -hmm. not what happened. Or they come in and under the law, a one time isolated incident does not reach what they call the prima facie or the basic elements of discrimination. Now, for example, we're going back to race in the workplace. Somebody used the N word. They go file a complaint and they feel like HR didn't do enough. So they file a charge of discrimination with us. We find out it's a, they said it one time and they got reprimanded. They wanted this person fired. Well, according to the law, a one-time isolated incident does not raise to the level of discrimination because it happened one time. Didn't happen mm -hmm. before, didn't happen afterwards. It was just a one-time isolated incident. That's not discrimination. So now, there's a lot more discernment that goes into to this then. So I think yeah. that that is so important because I, I don't I really don't feel like the culture does your job justice it makes a lot of assumptions and here we're finding out that wait a minute there is a code there's a law there's discernment there are people who respect the law there are people who are trying to really figure out how do we make these two parts work together um mm -hmm. and how do we how do we make this 
a, a, a good a good solution for everybody. And I, I feel right. like the culture we're living in is like, no, there is no, there are no solutions to this. It's just gonna be this one way. Um, I, I don't mean to turn it this way, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to leave here in a few minutes, but I, I wanna, okay. if you don't mind, make the turn over to um, workplace witnessing, right? Because you, you said religion's inside of there. And yes. I also wanna make the, the, the point into, okay, the two, the, the, the two questions I have is, mm -hmm. um, what do we say to the church for those who are called to be on mission, um, which is which is every Christian, and says, that, look, I, I, I need to share the gospel. I, I need to, to be a part of this, this gospel living. <clears throat> Completing, you know, that's my ethic. But at the same time, I've got to respect the workplace environment, the time mm -hmm. and place, and what's allowed not allowed. So that's my first question. What would be your advice to that person? Second of all, what would be your advice to pastors? What would be your expectation of, say, your church pastors in dealing with what your job and what you do? Like, how does the church come alongside and help the mediation process? Not like the way you do it, because you, you're bound by laws and you're bound by a paycheck and you're bound by certain things. But yet, how can the church in the community that says, hey, look, let's not let's not be a stumbling block to these discriminations. What would you expect from your pastor if you came and said, look, um, I'm seeing discrimination against women and race and ability and all kinds of things, and I want my church to be an active participant in finding solutions to this as I'm doing my job in the workplace and you're doing your job in the church, right? So those are my two questions. How does a, a Christian abide by the ethic to evangelize yet still abide by you know mm -hmm. place rules the second one is what would you expect from your pastor when you sit down with them and say i want to be a solution to some of the stuff i'm seeing in my job the main thing that i would expect from a pastor if i come to him going look here's the problem we already know what the problem is there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of divisiveness out there. People are angry. People are upset. People are getting misinformation, half truths, out and out lies, all, all the way around. And mm -hmm. it needs to stop. The lies need to stop. The miscommunication needs to stop. How do we, as a Christian, how do we? as a compassionate individual do it first of all we got to look in ourselves what are we doing to either spread the misinformation or be that light to truth so mm -hmm. that's the first thing because you can't witness to anybody else if you're not clear about your authentic truth because you're you know if you're not clear about who you are and your authentic truth, you're just going out spreading lies. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is we need to sit down. We already know what the problem is. Because we can talk about the problem all day long. And that's not going to fix anything. So everybody's on the left side. That's the problem. How are we going to get to the right side? Communication. And I don't mean talking at each other. And that's the problem. We talk at each other. We can talk at each other all day. We got to really sit down at the table and have those difficult conversations and really listen. And that's where you got, and mediation is not just in the workplace. Mediators are peacekeepers. So you have mediators in churches. And that's where I would volunteer my services. I would get other mediators to volunteer their services to sit down and say, hey, look, we need to have these difficult conversations and I will volunteer to be the facilitator. Let's talk about how are we going to build that bridge? How are we going to forge together? How are we going to say, hey, I wanna hear your opinion. I may not totally agree with it, but I got to get to that place where I can respect that opinion, but more importantly, respect you as a person and not look at you as a collective. Yeah. So we got to do life together. That's you know, right? yeah. and that's the main thing. We got to do this. And if we don't do this, 
we're going to continue destroying ourselves as a as a society, yeah. as a world. That's really we good. We don't listen to each other. We don't hear each other. We talk at each other. We just mm -hmm. did, 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 and all you hear is noise. It's just yeah. a bunch of noise. But when well, you sit Art, Marcy, down and talk. You you have done a tremendous yes. job today. We've given, given us a lot to think about. In fact, we need to maybe extend this in another setting. Um, you did way better than I thought you were going to do. <laughs> but uh, we got to jump off here. I'm in a conference. Jason's got a funeral and there's some other things that are going on. But we want to have you back and we want to okay. continue this discussion because we want to see what that looks like. And when we talked earlier, you had a couple of examples of times when you've had to be a mediator, you've had to be a counselor, you've had to be a peacemaker, yes. you've had to be yes. um, an investigator, and you've talked about a number of things that you're responsible for doing. You know, as mm -hmm. Christians, I don't think any of us just wears one hat. You know, we're a no. father, we're a husband, we're a friend, no. we're multiple different no. things. And to, to figure out how no. to do that with wisdom, I think, is mm -hmm. one of the things that we come away from this believing, like the Lord is going to have to help us to do that because we're called upon to do a lot of different things in the world if we're going to be influenced for, uh, for Christ and, and for the kingdom of God. And so right. we're going to have you back a little bit later. We're going to wrap okay. the show up, but thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure. This is wonderful. I enjoyed it. I really tell, did. Tell all your friends to subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> thank you, you guys. Take care. Thank you so much. Enjoy the weather. Keep Thanks. Austin oh, weird. I <laughs> all right brother plumber <clears throat> that was cool i i would uh i would love to have her back to talk more the, the mediation thing is fascinating one of the things and this is i don't know how to say this without it being what it is but as a as a white pastor in a rural town with predominantly uh white people um i think there's a misconception or misunderstanding about the civil rights um what's going on in the work, but we, we just automatically assume if somebody plays the black card, so to speak, well then we, we, we're loose. <clears throat> the, the, the white person's gonna lose, the black person's gonna win, and that's all there is to it. There's no discretion, there's no discernment, there's no real law, it's just a matter of fact. And I, I think that is perpetuated by the cancel culture, and then the media is just influencing crazy. <clears throat> to hear Marcel talk about, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> First of all, uh, there's a code, there's a, there's a law, there's things that have to be followed. She talked about Standards. evidence, yeah. proof, and, and there is something that, that, that needs to follow place. The other thing I liked about it was just hearing her discretion say, wait a minute, I'm also a, a, a knowledgeable um, woman doing this for 20 some odd years. Um, I'm not just looking for, quote unquote, my own tribe, my own, my own people. I'm looking for the truth, of what's happening at something. And <clears throat> it's almost like you undermine people in her job, if you don't give them the benefit of the doubt that, Hey, wait a minute, maybe they're, they're looking for viable solutions. Yeah. And maybe the, we as a people <clears throat> and the media should begin to have more conversations with Marcy and find out what's really going on that you, you know, what, what really constitutes your job and how are you, how are you moving this thing forward? Which I was kind of fascinated by it. Like, wow, who knew, who knew all that and who knew Yeah. Uh, she seems very passionate about it. And she seems like, she really is trying to work to a good end. Um, and, and that's just, I think that's missed. That's missed. And I, I wish people would have the opportunity to sit down with her and say, wait a minute, there's more to this. It's not just cut the way the culture cuts it. Right. Um, a, re a really good interview. And, you know, sometimes somebody being in your family can be a barrier to you actually get them on the show and, you know, actually being able to do stuff together, really great content. If we didn't know Marcia, like she was just a random person and yet she had her expertise and her skill and her knowledge of what she was doing, we would just, I mean, that'd be a great treasure to have on the show. And, and yeah. yet I know her extremely well. And so it's doubly a treasure to have her on the show and, and a yeah. pleasure to have such. And yeah, passion is not something that's lacking in my family. <laughs> <laughs> No, I yeah, I would love to have her back, and I we didn't get the chance to talk as much about the workplace witnessing, but she definitely gave me a good foundation to understand what's happening when you hear her job title and what she's doing in mediation. Mm -hmm. Now she's having to take these cases on and discern the truth. I have a better understanding now of how that works, and that mm -hmm. gives me a lot of confidence. Hey, we we need people like her, and we need that job uh, because because she's right, discrimination happens. 
And it happens often enough that that mediation needs to take place. Um, yeah. But to have the confidence to hear say, look, I, not every case that comes before me is discrimination. I have to look at the facts, the evidence, the proof, the documentation. I have to go from just somebody's word to what the actions are. And I have to look at that. I thought, wow, that's that's incredibly that's what we do in, a, in the pastoral ministry. We, we have to listen yeah. to everything, put it all together, find out what's what and then try to provide some some solutions. So, hey, that yeah. was great. Thank you. Love for having it. Her on. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. Stuff. Well, we're about to sign off here. Thank you guys for joining in today. Uh, Aaliyah says, yes, have her back. Oh, yeah. and so, uh, yes, we will, we will be looking to do that. That's strong commendation there. And, uh, yep. brother, you have a fantastic day. What are you preaching tomorrow? Actually, uh, Sonny's preaching tomorrow. I had the opportunity okay. to, uh, to, uh, to take a few days with the family, do some glamping. It wasn't quite do camping, it, <laughs> but it was, uh, but I, for the funeral, I am, uh, a preaching out of John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus says I'm the resurrection and life. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to hope oh, we had a young man who's 20 years old in an accident that just far too young. And the family's grieving. Um, so death does not discriminate between young or the old black or white, able or disabled. It comes yeah. to all of us. So I'm um, trying to present the gospel um, and help them understand that life can only be found in Jesus Christ. Um, mm. If he dies, yet he will live, Jesus says. So, Well, you've brought that hope to this show, and I'm sure you're going to bring the hope to the family and, and yeah. to the congregation there in Litchfield. So thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, friends and family out there, thank you guys for your contributions to the show. Tuning in today for any portion of this, you can go back and watch. The whole thing. You can watch the whole thing.